What's going on, boxing fans? Julian Williams here at the distance. I'm making a video response to Reggie Tiller, um, somebody that's actually quite popular within another community um, on YouTube. Um, really, you know, I watch his videos. Pretty much, he's a whole train wreck um, of a channel. Um, He's been pretty much caught with saying stuff he doesn't really know what he's talking about. Um, I've been seeing his videos for quite a while. Um, I first seen this kid make a video on um, some channel. He was, you know, talking all kinds of crap about about specific fights and talking about Pacquiao's a punk on one of his videos on one of his channels. He has multiple accounts. He's like. Um, and pretty much, and I will tell you the truth about this guy, he's similar to those trolls that got on the internet years ago. Um, the, with those little kids like the Christian YouTuber and that Josh YouTuber, and they're making multiple videos, trying to get all kinds of attention. Well, he seems to be, to me, one of those people that try to get attention. Um, makes videos that, that pretty much will get him attention, and apparently he's not well liked um, here on YouTube. I'm not going to pass judgment on him. On the young man, I know he's like what 16, 16 years old, and doesn't really know what he's talking about. From time, most of the time, ninety percent of the time, does not know what he's talking about. And that's due to the fact that you know, at sixteen, you know, you shouldn't even be talking about life issues. Because when I was sixteen, you know, I I didn't know a hell of a lot about life, and it took you know living for me to learn about life. Um, and I was able to catch that when he he made a video talking about. 9-11, um, how he loves America, blah, 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 um, had family that went through 9-11. I mean, that were police officers and all that stuff, who cares? Um, but, you know, went on to say, I don't hate Muslims, I hate extreme Muslims. And to me, there's no such thing as extreme Muslims. I think that there's people that follow their religion um, and, and pretty much um, closely examine it. You know, scrutinize their own religion and there's people that you know, and there's people that are just secular with their religion. There's people that are just, you know, dedicated to their religion. So I wouldn't call them extreme, but that just shows that's one thing he doesn't know what he's talking about. Um, another thing he doesn't know what he's talking about is boxing. When it comes to boxing. And I can tell you that from the first phrase that he brought up, I could tell he knew nothing, nothing about what he was talking about. He talked about, the first name that he brought up was Don King. Don King, to me, is no longer relevant in the sport of boxing. Yeah, he had a pay-per-view on March 13th or 12th that, um, that, yeah, I bought and only bought because, just because I was, I'm a fan of the sport in general, so I bought the card, okay? Um, yeah, we know about Don King, um, and the money, he's pretty much um, ripped off from his fighters. We, we know about that. It's nothing, you know, something that's well-documented. But also look at the fights. Look at the look at the fights that he's promoted. You know, in sports, some of the best fights that we've seen, um, Don King promoted. Um, Don King was responsible for you know the, you know he made you know he made a lot of fights, a lot of money. And you know, I've heard you know the controversy behind them. I've heard the stories, um, you know, of what he's done and the corrupt stuff that you know he's been involved in in the sport. But also. People are gonna look at the more negative that he's done, or the more negative with the DKM, or uh, excuse me, um, DKP, than you know the positive that he's done. You know, he's promote like I say, he's promoted some of the best heavyweight fights of all time in two you know in two different decades, and um, you know promoted Ali, Holmes, Tyson, um, even Holyfield for a bit. Um, he's promoted these fighters and. You know, even John Ruiz, who, who I think is probably one of the sorriest heavyweights, you know, among most of the champions, who's one of the sorriest heavyweights among most of the champions, you know, along with Value F, promoted these guys. But hey, look at what he's done in the sport in the past, and you're going to look at the negative more than you look at the positive, apparently. Um, Bob Arum, Bob Arum is doing a hell of a lot for the sport right now. He's still putting together good fights. Whether they're in house shows, whether. They're, um, whether they're um, co-promoted, he's put together some of the best fights in history. Those two men together, Bob Arum and and um, Don King, have put together pretty much some of the most expensive, excuse me, some of the most popular cards um, 
in all time in the sport. Don King in the nineties was just back to back, you know, making millions off of his off of his cards. Um, you know, just look at the fires that came up under Don King, um, who were pretty much promoted by Don King. You know, look at the you know, fires like Felix Trinidad, uh, Felix Trinidad, Mike Tyson, Muhammad Ali, Larry Holmes. Um, you know, even um, you know these days he has Devin Alexander, who's a contender. He has Tavares Cloud. So somewhat, he still maintains a specific type of relevance. He, he has little relevance now, but he's still, you know, pretty much trying to get the best fights to have. He even has Joseph Agbeko, who's in this, who's in this tournament right now. Um, Bob Arum. Bob Arum has Manny Pacquiao. He has Brandon Rios. He has some of the hottest fighters um, in the sport of boxing underneath his banner. Has some of the hottest fighters, and he. You know, he's, and he's making money left and right. And this is only with in-house shows. He has his own stable to where, you know, he can just put together any fight that he wants and make money off of it. Now, Bob Arum, um, well, Bob Arum, yeah, we know about the Mayweather, Pacquiao, the Baco. But, you know, us boxing fans are, t are sitting around talking about, all right, the sport's going to die if this fight doesn't happen. We're not sitting around doing that. Because we have so many good fights to look forward to. Even with and even with fires that we never heard of, these fires that we, we hadn't heard of are coming out and it, and they're giving you know great showings. You know, this is how we discovered Manny Pacquiao. You know, this, this is how we discovered Manny Pacquiao coming in at the last minute. Um, about nine years ago and now look at me. Now look at him. He's like the number one he's rated number one pound for pound best in the world. Um, last minute fighter. Also, Sergio Martinez came in at the last minute. Now he's a top pound for pound fighter, top three. Um, so overall, with boxing, you know, you it's one of those cases where you'll never know. But also, you talk about impartial promoting. Um, don't know what the hell you're talking about um, with impartial promotions. I don't believe that promotions can be impartial because it's like whatever makes the best money are going to be the fights that happen. If you can make money off the fight, if it draws a crowd that people want to see it, then hell, just, they just make the promoters make the fight happen. See, boxing is like politics. We elect, pretty much what we do, we don't have a say in what goes on in the sport. But also, the only way we have a say in what goes on is pretty much our right to vote. And our right to vote is whether we elect to watch the sport or not. Whether these certain fights come on, if we watch them, that's our vote. If, you know, just recently, Victor Ortiz versus Andre Berto had, you know, had um, been one of the highest rated shows, along with another high rated show, which was Solo Alvarez versus uh, Matthew Hatton. Very few in the United States knew who Matthew Hatton was. They, 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 the name Hatton is recognizable, of course. The name Hatton is recognizable due to the fact that Ricky Hatton's brother fought, you know, Mayweather and Pacquiao. He was the champion. I'm also Casa Zoo, but you know these fights are pretty much making millions of dollars, um, getting millions of views. Um, so is boxing dying? Uh, no. But also another point that you made was Mike Tyson. Um, when it comes to Mike Tyson, yeah, we all know the story with Mike Tyson. Could we blame Don King for that? No. How much money did Mike? If you look at the residuals and Look at the income he was making. How much money did Mike Tyson make um, in his whole entire career? I believe he made over hundred, over a hundred million dollars in his entire career. He had multiple endorsements. He was highly profitable, and I'm sure he made a lot of money. You know, pretty much made a lot of money under Don King, um, and whoever, whatever promotion he was under, he definitely made a lot of money um, without, throughout his career. Now, being young, from an area like a Brownsville, Brooklyn, um, when you have, you know, you grow up in poverty and you finally have money, you know, more likely you're gonna spend it when you get money. Of course, um, that's that's just how it always is most of the time. And yeah, he's now broke, right? Um, that's what they say. I don't, I don't know. Um, I don't know what the man's income is like. I don't know how mu how far in debt he's in, but. To call Mike Tyson the biggest American tragedy is, to me, a real bullshit call. Um, 
Mike Tyson is the reason Mike Tyson is in the state that he's in now. You know, I think it's I th that's just me. I think Mike Tyson is the re reason he's in financial turmoil right now. Um, Mike Tyson was the one that went out and spent millions of dollars on you know stuff they didn't need, bought multiple houses, bought multiple cars, um, stuff, things of that nature. That was Mike Tyson. That had nothing to do with Don King, though Don King did make a good percentage out of his money. But Mike Tyson made hundred over a hundred million dollars in his career, I believe. A million do, you know, multiple million dollar pay per view buys, um, highly profitable fights, and he fought nobodies and like like a Peter McNeely, and went in and pretty much um, pretty much made million dollar you know. I think he had like million dollar buys. It was like over a million buys, I believe. Also, he got his tattoo in before, like in February 2003, in the fight before Clifford Etienne, um, a week before the fight. So that didn't happen after his career. It was in his career. Um, but also, saying he's the biggest American tragedy is bullshit. The biggest American, and let me educate you since you don't know anything about boxing, you don't know what you're talking about more than half the time, so let me educate you. The biggest tragedy, the biggest American tragedy in boxing is Joe Lewis. Hands down, Joe Lewis. Joe Lewis was an American hero during World War II. Um, if you look at, and I've explained this multiple times, but I'm going to explain it again. Um, Max Mellon versus Joe Lewis II was a pivotal fight in American history. A boxing match, a pivotal fight, a profitable fight, a fight where many in their homes were tuning into on the radio to listen to. It was a pivotal fight because you had a German heavyweight champion, which is something that, that rarely happens in boxing. I mean, or at the time, it was something new. We never had a German heavyweight champion. Most, a majority of those champions have been in the United States. They fight in Madison Square Garden in New York. They fight in Madison Square Garden in New York, and Joe Lewis defeats Max Mellon, and like in like one or two rounds, defeat him in a, in short in a short fashion. Defeat the heavyweight champion, becoming the second African American heavyweight champion, with all kinds of rules, to where he could what he couldn't do because of Jack Johnson. Joe Lewis did a whole lot. To me, I think did a whole lot for boxing. I think he I think he's looked at as an American hero. Mike Tyson was not looked at as an American hero. Joe Lewis died in debt. And that's because he had a fight to where it was supposed to be a charity and somebody pretty much I think it was like on the tax form it wasn't marked as a charitable event and he ended up being in debt as a result of something that was not his mistake. The man the man was also a was utilized as a war veteran. I don't think he really fought in World War II. Um, I think he was just there, you know, doing exhibitions and all that stuff. Also to kind of promote the war, whatever. Um, you know, fought, you know, had multiple title defenses. Multiple title defenses um, throughout the years. And he died broke. Hands down, he died broke. And it, and it wasn't his fault. It wasn't his fault at all. And... To me, that's the biggest tragedy in boxing. Not Mike Tyson, not a man that, and don't get me wrong, I like Mike Tyson, but not a man that spent all his money, that burned all his money, of course, but a man that lost his money off a mistake, who went, out, who went in, who was dirt poor, didn't have anything, but in boxing was what helped him um, become a hero. It helped him become a hero and establish income. Joe Lewis is the biggest American tragedy in boxing. Will boxing die? No, it's not going to die. As long as fights are happening, as long as we have our promotions such as main events, such as Sarlin, such as Goose and Tudor, such as Golden Boy, Frank Warren, as long as we have all these promotions, we're good. From a global standpoint, um, from a global standpoint, from whatever, you know, we, boxing won't die. Um, so if you're going to make a video and you talk about why a sport is dying, then please talk about something relevant in the sport. Talk about something that has relevance. Don't bring up Mike Tyson firing the past. 
that burned all his money saying he's the biggest American tragedy in boxing. He's not. Um, it's a tragedy, but also, don't forget the epics. You know, the epic stories in boxing. More so than the tragedies, if you're going to talk about a sport dying. Um, pretty much to me, you're just a guy looking for attention. It is what it is. We all have trolls like that on the internet. You can sit and respond to me. I'm not responding back. Because I'm not going to get into a spat with a 16 year old kid who more than likely, who pretty much doesn't know what he's talking about. I pretty much said what I needed to say. Um, and I'm not going to be on YouTube for a while. So, anyway, Reggie, um, good luck in your channel in the future. Um, hopefully, that train wreck becomes a plane crash and you become more hilarious than you actually are or something. I don't know. Not that funny. You just. He just makes stupid videos, and I guess it's entertaining to an extent, but when it comes to boxing, don't talk about it, unless you know what you're talking about, because you look dumb talking about it. So anyway, peeps, that was The Distance. Thanks for watching. Peace.